Hey guys, guess who I'm with today over in sunny Deer Park, Washington? Rizelle and Stephanie. Hello. Hi. Hi. I don't know why I'm looking at you. I know. Hello. <laughs> I'm used to looking at you there, but now you know, look at you here. That's right. It's a little <laughs> different view. It is. And it's so sunny, we're in shades. Do we look good or what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about loans prior uh -huh. to our video, mm -hmm. and you had some questions. Which loan do we want to chat about? The DSCR one, right? We did a video some time back, or be a link to it someplace in this video, and we have a much longer discussion. The DSCR loan stands for Debt Service Coverage Ratio Loan. It's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> Hence, we call it the simple loan because oh. it still makes it easier to say. Yeah, and, simple loan. And it's still simple. Okay. Okay. This loan doesn't require any income. That's what this is. What's beautiful about the DSCR loan, and why many of our investors like it. So, first of all, it is an investor loan. It's only done on non-owner occupied properties. You're not going to buy your residence or your second home with the DSCR or simple loan because we're going to use the income on the property as the qualifying income for the loan. So we want to make sure the rental income is greater than, equal to, or greater than the total mortgage payment. That's PITI, um, Taxes, Insurance, Homeowners Association, yep. all that stuff yep. built in. So when you do the loan application, <laughs> <laughs> Page two on the loan application, when you do a regular loan, it's all filled out. It's a pain. People hate it. They know that because they tell me I've got to put in all the jobs or part-time or previous employment for two years and all that good stuff. Page two on the DSCR loan is blank because we don't get any other Scratch income. that off. That's done. All right. No headline uh, proof. Uh, no page two. No Bonus. Page. Well, page two is there. Just blank. Okay. Blank okay. page two. Yeah, we have to have the full application. If you have other properties, we do not get the income off of the other properties. We okay. only use the income off the subject property, which is okay. the one that we're doing the loan on. Okay. If it is a purchase scenario, you don't even need to have a tenant in the property because okay. the appraiser is going to tell us what the market rent is and that's what we're going to go off of. Um, what are the stipulations, like if someone were to want to buy an investment property and utilize this type of loan, okay. what are like the three basic questions you would ask them to even see if they would qualify for this type of loan or fit for this loan? Such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this, okay? That was a good question. Um, we're going to want to know the income on the property. That's okay. vital, right? So when we take a look at the loan payment, we know there's nothing from there to cover it. And I will tell you that we can do the loan when the income on the property is less than the mortgage payment, okay. but it's not cheap. The, the parameters of the loan can change. The loan to value may drop, which means you put more money down because your debt service coverage ratio doesn't quite fit the guidelines. And the rate's gonna go up for the same reason. So you gotta be careful there. Another thing that drives it is credit score. Okay. That drives the interest rates on these loans significantly. And how much down payment, because that drives things. Um, the very same borrower on the very same property putting 25 or 30 percent down as opposed to the minimum 20 percent down is going to get a better rate because they put a larger down payment down which helps out what's okay. the minimum credit score you're looking for for this type of a loan it's Anything? a great question stephanie i'm going to I, I, i'm thinking through this it's probably <laughs> 620 okay. for a credit score okay. and and the rates are higher at yeah. a 620 than a 720 noticeably higher on okay. this loan we can do something to help out with the payment though. We'll put an interest only loan in place or a 40 year amortization or something like that because what drives these loans is cash flow. Sure. Okay. And that's what the investors want. So they're willing to accept a higher rate for the term of the loan because they're only going to keep that loan for probably three or four or five years because they believe they're going to be in a situation where they can refinance out of that loan maybe okay. with regular income or something. Their intent is to yeah. refinance out. Yeah. Or they're going to sell the property potentially. So it's not a long term loan that someone would want to utilize. Well, it is a 30-year loan, Okay. and people keep them for longer than they think they're going to keep them often because okay. it just happens, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So then I'm sure another question would always come into play of like, but what about my debt-to-income ratio? How is that factored, or is that even factored? Good question. It's not, because oh. we do not get income um, on anything else but the property. Okay. That's why it's called debt service coverage, because the right. income on the property needs to service the debt. On the property. What's the, the ratio name. that that has to be at? We want it one or greater. One or greater. Yeah, okay. And multifamily investors, if you've been purchasing apartment buildings and multifamily for years, it's the same loan. You're very used to it. It's 1.25, maybe 1.3% 1. Okay, in that okay. market, like a 10 unit or a 20 unit or a right. 60 unit apartment building. In the single family or up to fourplex, it's usually one to one, one is what one. we want. Okay. 
Mm, with appraisers, they're great at giving market values on properties. How good are they at giving rentals? Because I don't know many appraisers that even deal with the rental income. Um, if it's an investment property, we require the appraiser to tell us what the rental income is on all investment properties, whether it's a DFCR loan or a conventional loan. Okay, are those typically pretty accurate if they're not familiar with the rental industry? Um, or? They better be familiar with the rental industry. <laughs> We're looking for accuracy. I don't know right. what I've, I've had it. I've never really compared to yeah. see, right? I've had some real estate agents say, oh my goodness, they could get more for that. So yeah. they may disagree with the appraiser. Sure. Okay. Usually, I think they're pretty accurate. They try to get market data. They're not there to stop the loan. Yeah. You know, they just want to be accurate as best they can. And with an appraiser being um, selected for that, is that following the same suit as traditional loans where it goes through the third party contracting system that Yeah, it is. Okay. We order appraisals through what's called an appraisal management company and okay. it's abbreviated MAC in the in the industry. And it's a typical appraisal just whether it's an investment property for no matter what loan you do. They're gonna give us the value and they're gonna give us the income approach to value and they're gonna give us the rental income okay. on the property. That's good to know. Very easy. So it can't be for a um, owner occupied home. Nope. Correct. Um, what happens if you have somebody who's like, but I could rent this out to my buddy and then I could be my buddy's roommate. What if you find them living in the residence? Yeah, I guess that's my question. I don't know that we're going to inspect afterwards. As long as there's enough rental income on the property to support the loan, we're okay. going to anticipate that they're going to put a renter in the property because that's what most investors do. I'm certain after the fact, maybe even a year later, mm -hmm. I have some clients a year or so later go, you know what, we fell in love with the property, we're gonna move in ourselves. As long as they keep making payments on the loan, I've never okay. heard a loan call left for that. Okay, okay. I'm just curious, because I could totally see, a, you know, a group of yeah friends or buddies yes. doing something like that yeah. as an investment, yes. and one of them maybe needing somewhere to live or, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or trying to pool together, you know what I mean? If so. it was the intent up front to live there, guys, and we're really clear yeah, about this, of course that's not. called loan fraud. That would be a problem if we found out about that. Yeah. If it's thank you for yeah. clarifying yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. That's not where we were headed over here. No, I'm question. just curious. Like, what happens then if somebody's like, but wait, I, wanna, I need to rent or I want to rent or whatever. But yes, yeah. so that answers okay. that. Yeah. Don't do it with your initial intent. Don't do it as the initial intent to buy the property. That's All right. Sure. So how many of these DSCR loans um, have you done and enjoyed doing? Are they they're pretty easy without that page two being in there to fill in? It sounds like they're a pretty just easy simple process. Loan. I'm telling you, they're okay. they're easy okay. when they work. We love them. Okay. They close quickly. The investor loves us. The buyer. Enjoys. What are some reasons that these loans don't typically work out if someone's trying to pursue it? Well, we pretty much know up front oh. if they're going to qualify, right? Okay. Because it's credit score driven and down payment driven. And by the way, we need to prove where the down payment comes from. There are, I think, a couple of my investors which will allow gift funds for the down payment. Just that but one. most lenders will not. They want the buyer to have their own funds okay. into this. And we test that with two months worth of bank statements. And as long as the funds have been there for two months, we consider those your funds. And that works for that. Minimum okay. down payment is 20%. We know all that going in. So the problem happens if the income on the property isn't what they expected the income to be. Okay. And we have had that happen. Okay. Okay. brings it in lower and then you go, okay, now what? Your debt income is not going to balance out to approve yep. the loan. Okay. So what happens, I know obviously having it seasoned in their own bank account, which is great, but what happens if it's a contingent down payment funds because they're going to be utilizing the sale or um, some form. Inheritance or. Yeah, something like that. Um, Those are or acceptable it's a delay. funds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And like 1031 funds would be right, somewhat exactly. of a contingency, right? Yep. Those funds are good. The IRS refund you just got from doing your taxes last month <laughs> is good. Because we got yeah. money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lots of money, right? <laughs> the so inheritance much. that you receive from great grandma passing away is okay. good. As long as you can prove it's really your money, it's mm -hmm. intended to be your money, it's fine. Okay. Um, and let me clarify as well, the other the lenders that allow gift funds typically want 10% of the down payment to, to be yours. 10% of the purchase price and 20% down payment. So okay. half the down payment needs to be yours. The other half can be gifted from a oh, relative. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Sounds like a really good loan program. And the rates, how comparative are they to, say, like a hard money loan or your traditional investment loan okay. structuring? Good question. Less than hard money, significantly, okay. higher than conventional noticeably. Okay. And they typically come with a prepay. Most of the Fannie Mae loans, conventional investor Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans, do not have a prepayment penalty because it's not allowed. So that's kind of nice, right? 
and the rates there are higher than owner occupied. These would be a step function higher with the DSCR loan than the investor rate okay. or a Fannie Mae kind of loan. And they'll typically have a prepayment penalty anywhere from one to five years. Oh, okay. They the longer the prepay, that. the lower the rate. Okay. And so basically they want you to stay in it for some term of one to five years before you refinance out of it. Yeah, actually. Okay. Or sell. And you can okay, choose to so sell, you but you're gonna pay typically it's five percent of the loan amount is what you're prepaying. Okay. It's okay. not insignificant. Okay. So no that, that is could well. be a chunk. Yeah, that's a chunk. Okay, yeah. That's not a quick turnaround loan. No, typically not. Okay. It's a keeper property kind of loan. Investment. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Buy, hold, <laughs> Buy then, then proceed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get all that equity built up. Yes. All right, good okay. to know. Thank you for answering our questions. Absolutely. Any other fun one? little caveats that we should know about that type of a loan particularly that you can think of? I'll give you a scenario that some of my investors love to use, okay? okay. okay. Um, they'll do a hard money loan to purchase a property and rehab it. And on a hard money loan, we need anywhere from 10 to 25% down payment. We could care less where it comes from in the hard money world. Okay. Right. And that loan is a short term loan and it's designed to help get into a property and potentially do the rehab and all of that. Mm -hmm. Once they get done with the rehab and now the value is ex elevated, we can do a refinance with that property into a DSCR loan to get rid of the hard money loan. Okay. okay. So you don't need any income to get all the way through to acquire properties and eventually own that property. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you can even utilize it to refinance other properties. Yeah. The okay. difference, one of the significant difference on the refinance is that there needs to be a tenant in the property on a Already. refinance okay. and we're going to look at what that tenant agreement is we can use higher than what market rent is so let's say you're renting it for three thousand a month and the appraiser says the market rent's 2500 potentially we can use that but we're going to want two or three rent payments received from the tenant and showing that they've received okay in order to do that <clears throat> okay good to know yeah it's a fun loan i call it a fun loan because my investors love it Somebody reach out to us. I want to do one of these bad boys. Yeah, property <laughs> for one. Let's do it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fun one, but I mean, honestly, it's I think a good option for people that are really on the fence about trying to invest and maybe they don't have that capital already. This is a great way to yeah. start that process. Yeah. Oh, honestly. they don't have the income. I mean, that's the thing. And yeah. if you do the interest-only payment, I think I mentioned you can do interest. Maybe it is. You can do an interest-only payment on this loan. Even with the higher rate, then the payment, because it's interest only, comes down close to what a conventional loan Interesting. How long can they get interest only payment for? Interest only payment is typically, I believe, 10 years. Really? Uh, it's a long time. Yeah. And, but, and if they had planned on refinancing within the five years or you know, options or something or anything like that, then. Yeah, once they get past the payment penalty period. So if you set it up for an interest only payment for 10 years, then what happens if you want to apply additional? payment towards that principal, are you allowed to? You are. You can put 20% of the principal amount down in any given year to yeah. okay. employ the principal. Up to 20%. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good strategy. Yeah, yeah. People, people who will like this loan really like this loan. It's like an it's old so cowboy easy. type loan. Where you kind of, <laughs> you know, agree on it in the back with the handshake sort of loan. Old cowboy type. I've never heard that name for but we might brand that. I you like called it. it fun. I called it the cowboy type. Fair enough. <laughs> Cowboys are fun, apparently. Cowboy though. They go well All together, right. absolutely. Yes. Well, as usual, it's been fun chatting with you, ladies. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. <laughs>